Hello and welcome back. The last time we stopped at the buckle digestion at the point where the food descends from the esophagus by the action of the peristalsis. Today we will talk about the gastric digestion. And of course we will talk about the stomach. So first we will draw the stomach. This way. So this is the esophagus. And here we said that the food descends from the esophagus to fall into the stomach. Well, the stomach is a dilated master sac and it's found in the abdominal cavity of the body or the gastric region. So our part today is called the gastric digestion. There are two sphincters which control the food passage in and out the stomach. So here we have the first sphincter which is called the cardiac sphincter. And this sphincter is constricted muscular valve, constricted. While the other sphincter is called the pyloric sphincter. And this pyloric sphincter is smooth muscle or a smooth muscular valve. So this one is constricted and this is a smooth muscle. The second thing here is the part with the muscles. We can show it like this. Here there are muscles in the stomach and tendons and so on to control the action of movement of the stomach in order to carry out the digestion process. So, when the food falls down from the esophagus into the stomach, the action of digestion occurs or takes place. But there are some uh, products which the stomach produces for in order to let the digestion process complete successfully. The first production is the hydrochloric acid. And this hydrochloric acid is 1.5 to 2.5 pH. And the pH is the property which determines whether the substance is alkaline or acidic. So, of course, this is hydrochloric acid. So, if the value is less than 7 pH, the medium is acidic. If it's more than 7, so it's... Sorry, if it's more than 7, it's alkaline. It's, if it's less than 7, it's acidic. So the hydrochloric acid, of course, is acidic. Its action, to, its action is to render the medium and stop the action of the thialine enzyme, which we said that's produced from the salivary glands, when the food first enters the mouth, the salivary glands produce the thialine or the amylase enzyme. So it stops the action of the enzyme and also it kills the harmful germs and substances which enter with the food inside the stomach. The second thing is the pepsinogen. And the pepsinogen enzyme, we have mentioned it the last time when we talked about the enzymes. We said that some enzymes are produced in an inactive state. And they are activated 
then with certain factors to carry out their function. So actually the cyanogen enzyme is activated by the hydrochloric acid to be transformed into pepsin. So we can write it this way that pepsinogen by means of hydrochloric acid changed into pepsin that carries out its function that we will mention now. So it is inactive and this one is active. So what is the function of this pepsin? The pepsin enzyme Here we have broadens plus water. And where did the water come from? The water inside the stomach, when the stomach uh, expels its gastric juices, actually water represents 90% from these juices. Water represents 90% from the gastric juices and the rest is for the hydrochloric acid and the pepsinogen. So the brightness plus the water here, with the action of the hydrochloric acid and the pepsin, of course, that we have said, it becomes active by the means of the hydrochloric acid. The brightness and the water are changed into fully peptides. So actually these polypeptides are smaller fragments of the process. And as we have said that the process of the digestion is the breaking down of polymers into monomers, large molecules into smaller molecules. So here is this is the origin, the presence and the polypeptides are smaller fragments of the proteins. Or they also are, can, we can call them the peptones. So after this process is done, the process of breaking down the proteins into polypeptides by means of the pepsin enzyme, and by means of the gastric contractions and relaxation, the food is not is can be partially digested and it's transformed into a substance called the chyme. And the chyme is a semi-fluid substance called a semi-fluid substance, not nearly, and it's of course situated at the stomach, then this chyme, after being digested well, it's moved from the stomach into the small intestines by the relaxation of the pyloric sphincter, which we said is a small mu smooth muscle or valve, to be discharged into the intestines. But remains here a last question. Why doesn't the stomach digest itself? Of course, the wall of the stomach contains proteins. So, why doesn't the stomach digest itself? We have here two reasons for this question. The first thing is that the pepsin or the pepsinogen is not active. Till it mixes with the with hydrochloric acid inside the cavity of the stomach. So the pepsinogen, which is produced from the walls in the stomach is not active till it mixes with the hydrochloric acid inside the cavity of the stomach. So it actually doesn't uh, touch 
watching the wars. And there's another reason, which is more reasonable than the first one. The mucus secretions. which are produced from the walls of the stomach to protect them from the enzymes produced. So that's why the stomach do not or doesn't digest itself. And that was our lesson today. The next time we will talk about the intestinal digestion. And until then, I thank you for watching and see you next time.